it is said always that whatever is happening is good. What is the meaning of that? Is it simply a consolation to give it to the mind? You would have heard the story in Aesop's fable, the story of a fox. Fox was trying to get the grapes and the grapes she could not get. So she ultimately decided that the grapes are sour. The best of the law is always can be used in order to hide the smallest and insignificant things. There is a similar statement is about Lao Tse. Lao Tse says whatsoever happens is always good, not because it is a consolation, Instead, it is because such is the understanding of Lao Tse. Lao Tse says, how can there be anything wrong happening? Here, by good, does not mean, is not a statement about an incident something you were expecting and it happened according to your desires, you consider it good and if it does not happen that way, why versa is the case. But Lao Tse's understanding is totally different. He says by the word good does not mean anything about the happening. Instead it says something about the one who is observing it, one who is seeing this. When Lao Tse says whatsoever happens is good, he says in this world there isn't bad that can happen for me. This statement is about the witness. If this statement is about Lao Tse itself. Lao Tse says, now there has not remained anything in the world, in the universe that can happen bad for me. I stand at that level from where nothing bad can touch me. Now everything is ultimate good. This is Samambhana. And this is the reason that Lao Tse is in that state of bliss that cannot be destroyed. Your happiness, your sorrow is transitory. Things happen your way, you feel happy. Vice versa happens, you are unhappy. But Lao Tse has reached to that level where nothing happens that can disturb him. But for you, nothing can be right right now. For you, only that will be happy which will give you happiness and that will be wrong, that will be wrong which creates unhappiness for you. As long as you are, your gestalt is sorrow oriented, focus on the sorrow that this one gives me problem, that one gives me problem, this one can make, this one makes me upset, 
that one I cannot take on when your approach to life remains like this how can there be anything right for you? As long as you can be happy you can be unhappy how can there be anything right? It is like this you have a television set which has more than one remote control. Remote control is the device to change the channels on the TV. All of a sudden you are watching a program on your personal television that is your mind. You are feeling happy, good. All of a sudden you spot a person walks through in the background, the channel is changed. How can there be happiness? How can there be everything good in your life? A child is born to you and dies. How can you say this is right? When people attend the funeral, or they hear the news of somebody died. They start giving consolation that this should have not happened and that should have not happened. There are certain things which is not in our hand. So in that situation, if I say, according to my understanding, it will not be accepted and I cannot say anything according to your understanding, so I remain quiet. Just recently, a young person got a heart attack and died. The similar statements and those things is happening. You have the cause of happiness and sorrow. As long as there is cause of happiness and sorrow, sorrow and happiness will always be there. And you cannot be, you cannot say that whatsoever is happening is always good. It may be a consolation for you, but not your understanding be that of Lausi, who says where I am standing at that level, nothing wrong can touch me. How would you say that sickness when it comes, it is right? How would you say that death has, death has come and it is right? As long as there is a desire for life, the death will be bad. Death will be bad. As long as there is a desire for health, the disease will be an enemy. It has nothing to do about the happenings instead, it indicates our own desires. If you say that everything is all right and happening, this will be a consolation. There will not be any happiness in this saying. Instead, there will be a streak of sadness. There is a kind of a, a disappointment. There is no declaration of the victory. It is an expression of failure. You could not do anything, so you try to console your mind that whatsoever is happening is right. Consolation helps the 
वन डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड कंसोलेशन इज ऑलवेज फॉल्स कंसोलेशन कम्स टू दोज हु आर नॉट रेडी एंड द रियल अल्टीमेट गुड और समम बनम कम्स टू दोज हु आर विक्टोरियस ऑफ लाइफ आई एम वेन आई से विक्टोरियस आई एम यूजिंग द वर्ल्ड in the sense that there is no way that you can defeat them lawsy says you cannot defeat me i am already defeated from the very beginning you cannot pull me down from my throne where i am sitting because where i am sitting that is the ultimate place there is no way from there to come down you cannot give me unhappiness or suffering because i have left the desire of happiness in the real sense the victorious is one in whose life fulfillment good is like light we are defeated people whatever we want we do not get whatever our desires are they do not fulfill they get scattered somehow or other we are beaten from all the sides in this defeat you use the word consolation this is all false imposed from the top then isab's fable seems to be right we all know the story that the fox was trying to get the grapes she jumped again and again and again and she could not reach the grapes the bunch of grapes but ego cannot accept ego cannot accept the failure ego cannot say that my jump was not enough to reach to the grapes maybe you know the in order to reach to the grapes which were high on the branch you have to take a much a stronger leap so that you could reach them but ego cannot accept that ego says the grapes are sour this story is incomplete if isaf comes back again to complete this story but i can complete it when this fox knew about it so she started she joined the gym and started doing exercise and ex- and started doing the jumps she took the medicines she took vitamins healthy foods with that the fox got very strong because she joined the gym and she learned how to take a deeper jump so as he came back after all this exercise came back under this same tree and with the first jump that she took a big grape a bunch of grape came in her hand and when she tasted it the grapes were really sour now what can the fox say so she turned back and told the people the grapes are really sweet this is ego 
when the fox could not reach the grapes then she declared the grapes as sour and when she reached there so even if the grapes are sour she has to declare that the grapes are sweet one thing you have to keep in mind whatever statement we are giving whether this statement comes out of our failure if it comes out of our failure then your statement has no value love says not teaching you that you should impose the consolation that whatsoever happens is good there is a particular in the song nothing happens without his even the leaf does not move without his doing lausi is saying consolation is connected with the music of life not of failure not of enmity it is connected with friendship lausi says whatsoever happening is such a magnanimous happening there are so many reasons it is spread it is mystical and you will be it will be childish if you decide about this happening if it is right or wrong you cannot be decisive this cosmos is such a magnanimous happening whatsoever is happening is simply a fragment <clears throat> it is like that someone picks up a novel reads a page here and there and tries to make a statement that this novel is good or bad this novel is full of indecent pictures indecent statements or not or not the all that is happening is interconnected with one another interconnected with one another we are not aliens nor as strangers to one we are bound to each other by a causeless force we are bound to each other by a causeless force i recall this has been my guiding force from early life my father wanted to impose the subjects like science so science mathematics either you become an engineer or a doctor because these two professions were considered to be a prestigious one the rest all of them did not come in that category but i had no interest in those so when it was imposed i failed second year i failed again in bsc then my uncle sufi master wrote a couplet to me in a letter that letter was addressed to me the other day when i read it for my father he i could feel from a distance that tears trickled in his eyes the couplet was shayad khiza se ho koi nayi surat bahar ki khiza means autumn shayad khiza se ho koi nayi surat bahar ki kuch isi mein hai masle mere parivar diwar shayad khiza se ho koi nayi surat bahar ki bahar means spring in the life of the tree all the four seasons are important one nourishes the other blossoms during one season the tree goes in hibernation when autumn comes all the leaves turn gold they begin to fall some drift away with the wind 
Others remain there decomposed and when the rain comes or when the snow melts, it nourishes the soil that becomes the manure for the upcoming season. Autumn is gone in preparation for winter. Autumn is the preparation for winter when the trees are covered with the snow and then comes the spring, the season of blossoming all around. Myriads, the one flower blossoms, it gives indication of myriad flowers blossoming one after the other. Shayad khizan se ho koi nai surat bahar ki May autumn bring a new portrait to spring. Kuch masle hat isi me hai mere parvar dikar ki. What is the will of my master in this I know it not. What would have happened if I was a doctor or an engineer? I would have lived my life just for my own sake. Family. Now it is not my life. It is a gift from unknown and unknowable for the benefit of the millions throughout the, the five continents. This is a greater benefit. All those people who are listening to this broadcast, they would have remained deprived of all this. We are seeing the things is like you want to see the sky, you have no courage to come under the, the, the sun, under the stars, in the, when the cold breeze is blowing, you are afraid of cold and all that. So you open the curtain of the window and try to look at the outside from there, protected within the room, the warmth of the room, you are getting a faint image. A particular circumstance or situation is a framed image in the, ex in the scheme of the existence. Existence is very vast. Existence is very vast magnanimous and a particular happening is simply an iota in that happening like a dot. How can you determine, decide from the dot that this is good and that is bad? Our vision is very narrow and out of that narrow vision we decide someone dies we say it is good, bad. If Hitler had died in his childhood, his mother will consider that something bad has happened. But if whatever Hitler has done and his mother was alive, she would consider that had he died, at birth it would have been better. This is also a part. And then there are many other dimensions of it. So do not judge anything from a simple thing. This can happen that because of Hitler the war could have stopped. But because of Buddha and Mahabir, the wars could not stop. Through so because of Hitler, it could stop. Hitler has given such a poisonous form to the war. It carried it to its ultimate state. Even if you fight at that, you will not find anything human in that. 
Now if there is simply a world war takes place, the entire credit will go on to Hitler. How can you say whatever Hitler did was good or bad? In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, when Arjun says that I cannot kill these people, they are my family, my friends, I spend my time in the lap of my grand sire, and all those. Krishna says in a humorous modern terminology, their visas have expired. When you come to a country, you are given a visa and you have to return to your native land within the expiry of that visa. That is the time that has been approved for you to stay in that country. Now Krishna says, if you do not kill, I'll have to kill it. And ultimately it happens it was Krishna who killed them, Arjun became the instrument. Arjun became the instrument and this is a secret. Another time when I get a chance to speak on the secrets of Bhagavad Gita, I will speak on that. And many times I did, but again and again certain messages need to be repeated. We try to make a decision only on a particular segment of the happening. Life is an unending, constantly flowing stream. Jivan akhand dhara hai, anant hai, anad hai. Na uska praram hai, na ant hai. Life is a continuous flow. From times immemorial it has been continued. There is no end to it. There is no beginning. Only God can be the decisive factor. The day this existence will vanish, then we can make a decision. Lao Tse says, when he says everything is good, he is in fact telling you not to be decisive. And when Lao Tse is saying that there cannot be anything wrong for me, it is not the decision of Lao Tse. Instead Lao Tse is saying, that I am flowing with the desires of the existence. My wish is not separate from that of the existence. I am flowing with it. Jesus was carrying the cross on his shoulders. In the last moment, Jesus is caught and the nails are stuck on his hand. Jesus, out of pain, a cry comes out and he says to his father, what are you showing me? Maybe there was some hidden desire in it which Jesus was not aware of it. And those nails as they pierced through his palm awakened that. Somewhere deep in the unconscious there would have been a sea and he would have thought that God would never allow this thing to happen to me. He considered this as bad. And how could Jesus, God, allow the cross or the 
close to heaven, one to his only begotten Son. That moment Jesus doubted God. Not everything was accepted. Cross became bad and whatsoever was happening also became bad. But there is another thing happens, the very next moment Jesus got awakening. Jesus thought that this was a mistake. I have considered myself wiser than God. I have given my decision, whatsoever is happening is wrong. Whatsoever was not to happen is happening. And in that moment, my trust is shattered. Same very moment, Jesus forgives. Jesus asks for forgiveness. When he asks for forgiveness, he said, Father, let thy will prevail. Thy will is my will. My will is fulfilled because thy will is the ultimate. And that very moment, Jesus became Christ. He became enlightened. Father, why have you forsaken me? I am your only begotten son. This was a mis this is the human element that speaks out of Jesus. But the two aspects have to be shown. In certain situations, the human element comes onto the surface and laments. But if there is Jesus through this example is saying the is showing the two states the human element and the Buddha element the awakening element the Jesus element and the Christ element and Lao Tse says I have reached to a point where I do not see anything wrong happening whatsoever is happening is happening for a reason I know it not the flowers belong to him, the thorns belong to him, the flowers and the thorn belong to the same tree. It is a statement. When Lao Tse says that everything is good, it is not the statement about the flowers and thorns, about the objects. Instead it is about him that is flowing with the eternal music. He is flowing, life is an eternal music. Everything is happening for a specific reason. We cannot see beyond time and space. We see only a fragment of time and we make the decision in that moment. Certain things are good, certain things are bad. A husband leaves his wife, he is considered as infidel, he cheated, but you do not look at the overall scheme. Two people are swimming in the ocean, one is drowning and he is asking for the help of the other, but he is also wavering. How can he help the other unless and until he settles himself and then he can help the other. We never do anything totally. Everything we do, we do halfway. We have visited a restaurant to have the dinner for your birthday or anniversary or a special occasion, the food is in front of you. This was my first radio program. When I put this program 15 minutes, that time I used to have a lady who was the announcer. 
she was already a radio person so she used to do the read the script. She said is this the spiritual program? The program said one of the most important thing in life is eating. Bringing the food, food is energy into you. How do we do? We have a platter in front of us. We have a morsel in our mouth. Next one in our hands. And the eyes are fixed on what is on the platter. And with mouth full we continue to speak. And there we speak about the food that you ate last time. In the other restaurant was tasting better than that. Can that food about which you are talking feel satiate you at that moment? At this moment whatever is available in front of you is the only thing that can satiate you. This is the way the life is. So it happens where we leave things incomplete because of many reasons. Then all of a sudden, like a deja vu, something happens in our life. You remember whatsoever you leave incomplete, you must come and complete that. Many relations in the past we have left incomplete. And those relationship keeps on surfacing again and again. You do not know how long after you have entered into life and when you will enter into life again, how many relations you have left incomplete. There is an incident comes in the, in the life of Gautam Buddha. Every morning he will dress take his begging bowl and then he will go and wherever he go, he goes. Crowd gathers and the sermon begins. This morning Buddha reached to a village where he was not to reach. It always happens. When existence wants to get something done out of you, it always, your cognition becomes that this is wrong. That is why this emphasis I am using the word. Buddha was not to reach there, but he reached to a village where he was not supposed to. But this is, this shows existence guides your steps. When there is a conflict between husband and wife, it is the existence which is the factor behind it. Buddha, a man came from amidst the crowd. He spit on Buddha. Buddha did not say anything. Then he abused. At this Buddha told him, he said, Bhadre, gentlemen, if you have to say anything else, please do. Because how many times I decided to come to this village, but it never happened. And I do not know when will I get an opportunity to come to this village. So whatsoever you have to say, please finish it off today. At this Anand, his disciples said, Buddha, what is this nonsense? That's what, probably he would have not used the word nonsense, but he meant that. You are such a pious man full of karma, compassion, and you have not done anything harm to you, and this man is spit on you, abused, and you are telling him that. You know what the Buddha said? Buddha understand me. Buddha said, Anand, this man has not done anything to you. Why are you opening an account with him? This is what happens, we always have Mr. Unnecessary around us. It does not concern you, but all of a sudden somebody comes from the crowd and gives his decision. What he is doing? He is opening an account for himself. 
And when the situation will come to repay that, he will not remember that. And then after 100 years or 200 years, when this happens, he will consider that that man is wrong. He leave his wife, he leave his husband, and he is running behind a woman. Because all this he has left in complete in the past has to be fulfilled. Buddha said, Anand, this man has not done anything to you. Why are you come, come, uh, opening an account? And then you will not remember when time comes for you to remember. You have seen something, only a fragment of it, and you are making a decision. Do you know why I have come to this village? Knowingly or unknowingly, I have closed all my accounts. Knowingly or unknowingly, consciously I have closed all my accounts. This is the only account that is open. And I cannot attain to Mahaparinirvana unless I close all my accounts. It is something like this, you have many credit cards open and you want to be free of the bank. It can happen only when you have paid off all the credit cards. Then you are given a clean cheat from the bank. All the loans that you have got messed up with the loans, this personal loan, that personal loan, vehicle loan, the appliance loans, the credit card and all these things you have gotten and this can continue until the bank will not give you a clear uh, chit, the finance clarity, unless and until all these things are clear. In the scheme of existence, existence cannot, enlightenment is the clearance chit from the existence that you have you have now no uncleared balances. You have not certain things you can clear meditatively. Certain things, if there is an awakening, many times it happens, I have to clear something with some person. If I could find, you send the message again and again. And if I find the slightest opening, I send the message. And if the message is received, then it happens that particular matter is resolved. But many times it does not happen. So I have to wait for the opportunity to clear that so that I do not carry any unclear defects. Lao Tse says the flowers are his, the thorns are his, whatsoever is happening. And this statement, everything is good, is not because, not about the objects. Instead it is that I have started flowing with the music of life. There is, this is no consolation for me. Consolation means everything is happening is wrong, I do not agree with it. And somehow, somehow or the other, we are tolerating it. When you do not agree what you tolerate it, that is the consolation. This is the most, the worsened form of religion, consolation. And the ultimate form of religion is music. The ultimate form of music is music you are flowing in, you are in harmony, you are an orchestra. You are a musical instrument in the scheme of existence. You are in tune with that. When a musical concert begins, the different artists, they try to tune in their instruments. And most of the instruments are tuned in with percussion instruments. 
Your body represents the musical instruments, the entire orchestra. Your solar plexus represents the the bellow instrument. The centers below that represent the percussion instrument. That is why nafs is symbolic of percussion instruments, tabla. But it has to be tuned in with the bellow instrument, which is harmonium. The move of the bellow of the harmonium moves forward and backward. That is the way solar plexus moves. Then comes the wind instruments. You are a musical instrument. There is a constant music flowing in between you and the entire existence. Nanak called it as Ekumka. Hindus have called it as Om. In every religion, a name is given to that which happens between you and existence. And this is the magnanimous, this is the ultimate form. And when there is a struggle between man and existence, it is the failure of man. And in that failure, we are seeking consolation, which is the lowest form. It all depends on you that you make this eternal law as consolation or you make it a music. When your life becomes a music, there is no better we, there is no harmony. Whatsoever happens, I have heard a Zen monk talking to his disciple. He said, my mind is full of all kind of thoughts. He said, that is good. The next one said something else. He said, that too is good. Someone said, my mind is full of shit. He said, that is ultimate good. That's very good. So for him, only thing is this, you have to understand it, why is this happening? And if you can remember that line, Shayad Khiza se ho koi nai surat bahar ki, kuch isi me hai maslehat mere tangur dibar ki. At the age of 16, when I read that letter, I remembered that, and it has become a part of my consciousness, part of my memory. Shayad khiza se ho koi nai surat bahar ki, kuch maslehat isi me hai mere tangur dibar ki. The moment you understand this, then you can realize that there is nothing wrong. Everything is happening for a specific reason. When in 2007, I got the problem with my feet for three months, I could not even walk, I had to pray. The first thought that came to my mind at that time, as if, Consciousness of God is saying that you have used your feet for too long. Now use my feet. Can you get that kind of a thought coming to your mind? And after that, everyone at home, my daughter is specifically being a medical doctor, telling me don't do this. Take a rest, don't sit down on the table, I won't on computer. And that time, a thousand pages were composed. I was new learning the computer technology. Many times it happened, I wrote, and by a mistake, all the pages deleted. So it happened a couple of times. 
that time two books, "Meditation: The Way to Self-Realization" and "The Secret of Bhakti" were written, thousand pages. I started the work in July 2007 and by end of October it finish. So now I have to look for publishers. One of the leading publishers from India, I sent him the message. He said, my son will be in Trinidad. You can talk to him. We spoke and we had a meeting over the dinner. That's a Jesus meal. Whenever he used to have anything important, he will invite his disciples for eat, eat and drinks. So when the belly is full, the person can make the decision without any problem. So he asked me, when do you want this book to start publication? I am going, I am reaching India next week, I can start it up now. I have no experience of publishing the book, not a known author. How does this happen? How it happened? When I went in November, I said, I am coming after two weeks, so I will meet personally. And as soon as I went, the book went into production. There was no question about it. Whereas after some time, another friend of mine, who happened to be in Trinidad, and he is the vice chancellor in many universities, he asked me if I could recommend his books to be published by the same publisher. The publisher asked the first question. He wants to know his profile. He wants to know his qualification, all that is required. Whereas nothing like that happened with me. This is when you accept all that is happening. When you forget your own pain, pain and suffering, you are in ultimate good. This is Samam Bana, the ultimate good. Lao Tse says, do not live in consolation. Consider that whatsoever is happening, you are making a decision only looking at a fragment of it. Life is not fragmentary. Life is a continuous flow. And whatsoever is happening is for a specific reason we know it not. When you are full of sore happiness, then flow towards religion. And it is difficult. When you are full of happiness, then it is difficult to flow towards religion. When you are full of sorrow, unhappiness, then it is easy to move towards religion. Remember the statement of Lao Tse. I stand at a point where no one can disturb my peace and serenity. No one can disturb my bliss because I know nothing wrong can happen and it has never happened. Let this be your guiding force. In the beginning you may forget many times, but a moment will come when this becomes a part of you Part of you, part of your growth, like a pregnant woman, you will be carrying it within you. Have you heard, have you noticed there is a peculiar quality of a pregnant woman? A change has taken place within her, in her biology. And, and because of that, the change becomes apparent and it becomes a part of her psychological change as well. And she never forgets that she is carrying a child in her womb. 
everything that she does, she does it with that understanding that she is carrying a child in her womb. A devotee is like a pregnant woman, who always remembers moment to moment that I am now pregnant with the celestial fire, with the love divine. There is no way for me to be otherwise. And then slowly and slowly this message will be a part of you that the world is total, is a continuous flow. From times immemorial it has been flowing and shall continue till eternity lasts. There is no way to break this flow. Only out of ignorance you can. And this is continuing to happen. You are only seeing a fragment of thing and making a decision. You have to look at the thing in ordinary life. If you are a judge and the judge has to listen to the two parties together to make his judgment, he cannot make a judgment just listening to the one. This he does. But if you understand, there are many factors in existence just as Buddha did. This is Buddha awareness. Slowly and slowly it begins to come when you accept things as it is, as part of the existence, as part of happening then a new opening happens in you, new understanding dawns in you, and you come to Buddha awakening. 